fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Ten years following the close of the Civil War was filled with unrest, even in the western United States. And it was during this period that the masked rider of the plains accomplished some of his greatest work in the cause of justice. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, he fought crime and criminals throughout the new territory. And it was he, more than any other man, who brought law and order to the lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young... From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the hill country! Come on, Silver! Away! After Lee's surrender, Doc Withers was mustered out of the army and returned to his wife and daughter in Gilpin County, Colorado. My sakes alive, how you've grown up, Margie. Why, you're a woman now, I do declare. Oh, boy, you old silly. I'm only two years older than I was. Two years is a lot when it turns a girl from 15 to going on 18, Margie. Well, it hasn't changed Pa any. No, I'm afraid it ain't. He's still got the same big-hearted look about him that's kept us poor all our lives. Now, now oh, Jesse... Oh, I won't complain, hey. I'm that glad to have you back safe and sound. Oh, it must have been a frightful thing, that war. It sure was. But by ginger, I can say one thing about our company. Them boys all went home in better shape than they was when they joined. I might have known that. I suppose when you was called on to patch up a scratched arm or something, you wouldn't rest contented it overhauled the critter in every way. Well, I learned a lot in that there army, Jesse. Yeah, I expect so. I can just see you curing gout and rheumatism and pulling out the teeth that wasn't no good and taking off the corns and everything else. When some soldier wanted nothing more than something to cure a stomachache. Oh, Ma. I never see a man like your father in all my life, Margie. Always wanting to do ten times as much as he gets paid for. I'll never forget the time he went to Sid Hart's place when the young'un had the measles. Before he was done, he'd fixed up Sid and his wife and all seven of the youngsters, and all in the world he got for it was half a peck of taters. But they was prime potatoes, Jesse. Well, you're home, and we still got a little cash left in the bank. Now, let's hope you get some customers with cash real soon. There was quite a number of Colorado boys in the Army. Reckon I had most of them in my company. They all come back here? Oh, most of them have foolish notions about finding gold, getting rich quick and all that sort of thing. Oh, I heard that Mr. Gabber has come back. Gabber? Well, well he was captain in our company. Cap Gabber. So he's back, eh? They were talking about him in the store today. There's talk that he's got a good thing in that old claim he staked before he went to war. Yeah? Don't know how true it is. I wouldn't trust Gabber any further than I can throw a half a Gilpin County. Why, well, Jesse, Cap Gabber's all right. What's the matter with him? His talk. Talk? He's too doggone slick and smooth. 
puts me in mind of a well-greased wagon wheel, the way slick words slide out when he starts talking. Dirtiest woman I ever see. Judge a man because of the way he talks. Just the same, Hay Withers. You mark what I say. Man? If Gabby Gabba gets sick, you make sure he's got cash. If he started a story going around that he struck a gold mine in that no-good claim of his, he's fixing to borrow money. Don't you lend him none. You hear? You ain't got no cash to lend, and don't go feeling generous just because Gabba was your captain. Outside of town in the hills of Gilpin County, Cap Gabber lived in a small shack. One morning, he worked hard on his claim with pickaxe and shovel for several hours, and then... There. Reckon that'll do her. The captain threw down his shovel, picked up his rifle, tamped some yellow dust into the muzzle with a ramrod, aimed it at the ground, and... Yeah, better reload and give her a couple of more shots just to make sure. No use taking chances on anything not going right. Gabber reloaded his gun and once again tamped yellow dust into the muzzle. Yeah, the most likely critter I know is Doc Withers. Besides, he's got cash money left. Now, right in the same place. The shots echoed and re-echoed through the hills. And miles away, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, heard them. Two shots, Tonto. Can you tell where they came from? Uh, sound that way. And that's a third. Three shots. Mm, that bad sign. Three shots is the danger signal, Kimasabi. Uh, that plenty long way off. Someone may have fallen from a ledge or into an old abandoned shaft. Here, Silver. We ride? Of course we're riding. When people fire three shots, it's because they want help and want it badly. And Tonto, get ready. Here, Scout. Do you think you can locate where those shots came from? And Tonto, try. Steady there, Silver. You never object to cinching up. We ride east. Maybe fine fellas that way. There aren't any gold mines east of us. That reason. Where gold mine located, plenty feller around. Where no gold mine, no one lives. You've hit it. East of here, there are lots of abandoned shafts. Someone has probably dropped into one. Ready? Huh? Me ready. Come on, get him up, scout. Three shots, the danger signal, started the Lone Ranger and Tonto on a search for trouble. They went along the narrow trails, listening for the signal to be repeated. But when no more shots were heard, Tonto's sense of direction became their only guide. Several hours passed, and then halfway down a hill... Two men there, Tonto. They don't seem to be in any trouble. Um, one fellow digging ground. There's a shack there, too. I didn't know there were any prospectors in this part of the county. No gold here. I suppose a lot of men from the army came out here. I've heard of the mustering out of the soldiers. The way so many of them headed west. Uh, we'll see what those two are doing. I doubt if the signal we heard could have meant anything. It hasn't been repeated. Quiet, boy. Just dig your own sample, Doc. That's the best way. I don't want you to have any idea I'm trying to put anything over on you. But gosh, Captain Gabby, I don't know nothing about gold. If this here was cutting some poor critter up or curing aches and pains or something... Oh, you don't have to know anything about gold mining. You know the gold's worth money, don't you? Uh, sure, I do. You know that there's an office in town that'll say your gold sample and tell you just what the claim is worth? I heard about it. Uh, I reckon that's a sample. Uh, I'll hold the sack down, throw it in. Uh, now, look. You see here? You see all these yellow flakes? Mm. Gold, my friend. Pure gold. The queen of the metal. The gold that men die for. The gold that turns a poorer man into a king. The metal that'll buy your wife and daughter all the things that bring joy to a woman's heart. Imagine travel. Take them to the big cities, New York, Chicago, and buy them fine silks and jewels. Why, you can take them to Europe if you want but, but, to. Gosh, Captain Gabby, Now, I... Doc, I told in the Army that I'd never forget what you did for these boys. I know, Cap, but... You, you see, I want to pay my debt. Besides, I must leave here. Relatives in the East, you know. Can't stay on it, I'm a Selma claim. And I want to be sure the man who gets it will be a deserving man, and that's why I called you. Hmm. You, you say all this yellow stuff is gold? Well, that's right. Yeah. How much you reckon this sack is worth? Oh, well, that doesn't amount to anything. Why, well, you dug that with only a few shovels, and that was off the surface. The ore gets richer as you dig deeper. But uh, what do you reckon she'd be worth? This sack for me. Take it to town. The clerk there can tell you. I'll go with you, and if you want to grab this chance, we can close the deal right there on the spot. (laughs) 
There. Just look, Jessie. Look. Silk for a new dress for you. One for Maggie. A new silk dress? Oh, Paul. You've been hitting our savings bank account. And here, Jessie. See this. These here earrings come all the way from New York. They're for you. And you know, all I had to do to pay for the whole thing? Throw out our savings. No, siree. I stuck a spade in the ground. Dumped the ground to a sack, and that was it. It was gold enough and just what I dug in two minutes, mind you, to buy all that. You've been talking to Gabby? Why, we're going to... Huh? Hey, with us. Now, no, Jesse, he had to leave. His folks in the East needed him. He wanted to repay me for all I'd done for the soldiers in his company. How much? Now, look here, Ma. I said, how much did you give that swindling, scheming, talking crook? Well, what's the odds? We're going to be rich. Oh, hey, I tried to warn you. I told you to watch that galoot. I know this country better than you do, you poor, innocent old fool. Now, Ma, maybe Pa had an the same I, I did. That's just it. Cap Gabby went right to the office with me. I bet he did. I uh, paid him for his claim. I gave him just $600. 600 Well, he wanted 2000 but... We only had 600. So you give him all we had. Oh, hey. Oh. Ma, stop oh, crying. Dear. Stop taking on so. We haven't lost oh. the house yet, and you don't know a thing about this gold mine. For all we know, it might be real. With Gabba selling it so cheap, there ain't a chance of it. Well, anyway, there's oh. no harm in waiting till we find out. Oh, now, Paul, take some more of the ground into the essay office tomorrow, won't you, Paul? Oh, oh, yeah. Sure thing, Margie. Ma, you put off crying till we hear what's what. On the following day, Doc Withers paced the floor of the assay office while he waited for his report. Finally, the clerk came out of the small back room and... You, you got the report? You, you got it finished? It's all done, Doc. Well, well, speak up. What's it worth? Uh, did you get this from the same place you did the sample yesterday? Sure, same claim, same place. Tell me what she's worth. I'm waiting. Uh, look, Doc, why do you want to fiddle around with gold mining? The folks here needs a doctor to recite more than they need another prospect. Eh? Never mind sidetracking me, Jim. Give me the report. What's she worth? I hate to tell you, Doc. Well, what do you mean? Ain't it as good as yesterday? No, it ain't as good. Well, what's it worth a ton? Nothing. What? Doc, that stuff you brought in is the same as a pack of other samples I've seen. Parites. Fool's gold, that's all it is. You mean to say I... I've been stung? Doc. Wh what in the world? Who's me, Dr. Withers? Mass, where in tongue did you come from? Who are you? If this here is a robbery, I... Of course I'll... it isn't a robbery. Maybe the doctor just dug in the wrong place for his sample of ore. You come with me. But, well, where where are you going? There's a man who needs your attention badly. Are you coming, or will I take you? You mean I, I got a patient? Come on. You needn't be so all fired definite about it, stranger. And you needn't say too much where that clerk can hear you. Here he is, Tutter. Redskin, eh? What's ailing him? He's not the patient, doctor. It's your own welfare that we're going to take care of right now. Eh? You've been swindled, and very badly. But it needn't be the finish. That man Gabber pulled an old, old trick on you. Uh, I was afraid of that after talking with Jesse. I reckon I'm just a doggone old fool. But right? you're not. You have more of a savings account than either you or your wife realize. I know what my savings was. But you didn't, then you still don't. You stored up a reserve that's worth a lot more than cash. Do you realize the number of men in this part of the country that would break their necks to help you? But I can't ask for help. I made my bed, now I've You've got... You've got to listen to me. But who are you? Come on, you'll ride with me on silver. Now look, stranger, before I ride with you, you got to take... Uh, up... oh, we don't want to waste time. Hey, hey, uh, oh, that, that's Jesse. What's the report? Is the gold mine worth anything or not? Tell her you'll see you later. You're going back to the claim right now. Get down from that horse. If you're going from local, you can't ride a horse like that. Jesse, I... I'm going to the claim, no. but I can't do it. This gent, this man here. You come back by and by. I'll see you. I'll silver oh. away. Doc, Doc, hey, come back. Help, help. Miss Withers, watch out. It's the doctor. He's being carried off. There he goes. A masked man's got him. A masked man and a redskin. Get a posse. Get the sheriff. Get my husband back. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode out of town with Doc Withers and headed for the claim. When they reached the shack where Gabber had lived, the masked man outlined a series of improvements. Build out from this side of the shack for a big living room. And then from that side, they make a kitchen and bedrooms. The shack itself will become a hall. Oh, that there house you're describing, stranger, would cost a mint of money. Now back there, you'll have a saddle shed and stables to take care of 20 horses. Oh, now look. This year's all grand talk, but... The shack but... will serve as your office for the time being, you see. We'll put about 10 men to work on digging the mine. The dirt will fly when they get started. Oh, that's enough. I can't listen to such tommy rot. Why, I don't have a dime. You forget what I told you, Withers. You have a reserve account to draw from. No, I haven't. There are at least 20 men in this part of the country, and they'll all help you. But, stranger, You I... give me the names of the men that you count on as your friends and let me do the rest. Just act as if you were going to pay them handsomely for their work. Well, I ain't that good an actor. I can't pay a thing. You'll pay them all and in cash. And while we're at it, we're going to fix up your house in town. Now sit down somewhere and give me that list of names. But, stranger... Come with us. I don't know. I have a lot of riding to do. You to do nothing but keep quiet. Keep quiet and remember that you're going to spend a lot of money. Lots of money. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode in opposite directions, calling on Silver and Scout for their greatest speed. When the masked man reached the home of Caleb Walters, he reined up and shouted, Caleb! Caleb, come out here! A what is... It's Doc Withers. A good old Doc. A what's about him? Take your best horse and a wagon and tools. He wants you to work for him. He needs you. I'd give my arm for him. He saved my life. He wants you to help him. What I got's his. Of where I'll go and when. Withers, you bet I'll go to him. Maggie, Maggie, pack things up. We're heading for Doc Withers' place. He needs it. Come on, Silver. We have six more men to see. If Doc only knew how these men are rushing to his help, he'd realize that money isn't everything. Hell Silver, away! Get along there! Get going! Before nightfall, a dozen men were riding toward the little shack in the hills of Gilpin County. Their own work was set aside. It was Doc Withers who needed them, and they welcomed the chance to help the generous old man they loved. Hi, Pete, where are you going? Doc Withers, and you? Doc Withers, I beat you there. Hey, boys, ain't genius and thick bird. Yippee! It's the old Sunday night artillery getting together again. Doc Withers sent for me. Uh, we're all going there. There's Steve Jackson coming in from the south. Get up there, boys. Wagons of every description, men on horseback, men who had fought side by side through the shot and shell of war, united once again to serve a common cause. As they neared their destination, they saw more friends coming from the west, the men who had been called by Tonto. A rousing cry rose from both parties. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, what Doc Withers want? Where's Doc? What do we do now? Where are we going? And then from the north raced a solitary rider on a snow-white horse, the man who had brought them together. He reined up and... I'll show you the way, men. Dr. Withers is waiting north of here. Just show us. Lead the way. We're right behind. Tell it up. The 79th is here. Follow me. Follow me. There was a gala reunion when the men reached the worthless claim that Dr. Withers had bought. The doctor listened in amazement while the Lone Ranger took charge and explained his plan. Then the work began. The men divided into three groups, and one went to work with their axes on the nearest trees. As the trees fell, their branches were lopped off and trimmed. Construction work began. Foundation piles were set in place, then stringers and risers. A huge addition to the shack began to take form. In town, the second gang went to work remodeling and enlarging the little Withers home, in spite of Mrs. Withers' protests. That man's took leave of his senses. Margie, what's got into him? I don't know, Ma, but we're sure going to have a scrumptious place. Gabber heard the talk that circulated around town... Finally, his curiosity got the better of him. He rode out to the claim and found Dr. Withers. 
Well, Withers. <laughs> Thought I'd find you here. Lots going on around this place, huh? Oh, oh Captain Gatton. Yeah, yeah. I see you're hauling out the uh, the ore. Oh, sure. Ain't no good laying there in the ground, you know. I, uh... <clears throat> Wondering where you were taking it. Uh, Captain Gabby, I'm, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. You don't know? Well, you see, I, I sort of got a partner now. And he's made me promise not to say anything. Uh, the uh, gold content. Oh, uh, there's uh, a funny thing, Captain Gabby. Taint gold that's here. Not gold? Shucks, no. Why, I bet you there ain't a dollar's worth of gold in ten tons of that there stuff. Not in a hundred tons of it. Then what is the value? Perhaps, uh, uh silver? <laughs> you, you'd never guess it in a million years, Cap. Oh, oh, here comes Margie. Whoa, whoa there, whoa, whoa. Oh, I rode over to tell you. Uh, by and by, Margie. Right now, I'm busy with Captain Gabby. I just wanted to tell you it's going to cost about $3,000 for the things we want to do at the house. Hmm, 3000 eh? Well, I thought I'd let you know because the first of the month is payday. You want to see about having a little cash sent here from... Uh, from where, Miss Wither? Oh, uh... I almost forgot I, I, I shouldn't say anything in front of strangers, should I, Paul? <laughs> strangers? <laughs> oh, just hear the girl, Doc, calling me a stranger. <laughs> Why, child, I'm the man who sold this to your father. <laughs> Tell her about me, Doc. I'm still not supposed to say anything. You know what the masked man said, Paul. Yes, that's right, Margie. Just so. We've got to keep our own counsel these days. Yes, sir. Yes, masked man? Who? Oh, uh, stand over there, Cap. See that tall gent watching the digging? Uh, oh, yeah. He's uh, sort of in charge, you see. Can't say nothing without him. Well, I'll go and say hello to him, if you don't mind. Mind? Sure not. I'd heap sooner you talk to him. Go right ahead, Cap. Go right ahead. All right. <laughs> so long, Doc. Bye, miss. Get up, boy. Get along there. Get along. Darn crooked old turnip. Ain't it funny the way Cap Gabby's nosing around, Margie? Oh, I'm worried. We're piling up a side of deck. Uh, I'm worried about that, too, honey. But the mask man says to sit tight and say nothing. Yeah, Ma's most beside herself with all that's going on. Oh, uh, what was that message you fetched me? Oh, oh, that. I just did what the mask man told me to. Look, Paul. Look at Gabby turning his smile on the mask man. <laughs> Gabby spent a restless night. The next day, called at the claim again. He watched the construction and tried to talk with the masked man once more. The Lone Ranger had no time for him. Then, in desperation, Gabby went to the sheriff. I'll see that you took care of. You help me, sheriff. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? Why, sure I am. I don't know, Gabby. I, I know what I'm talking about. That claim's worth a fortune. I'm not fooled by the way that masked man and Doc Withers say it ain't. Well, they got something there I want. I got all my cash here, every dime of it. I aim to make a deal or bust. And I want you along to witness it so as Withers can't back down by and by. Well, if you know what you're doing, it ain't no skin off my nose. Come on, where is Doc Withers? At the mine, of course. Spends all his time there watching himself get rich. Let's get started. <laughs> Hey, Doc. Oh, what's on your mind now, Gabby? Howdy, Jim. Howdy. Uh, Doc, uh, I sold you this claim for a song. You know that. Well. And the only reason the world I was willing to take such a sacrifice was that I, uh, well, I knowed you didn't have no more cash. I thought I had to go east, and now I don't have to go, and, uh, well, it ain't right or fair for you to hold me to a bargain. Gabby, what are you getting at? I want to call her deal off. Jokes, I can't do that. First place, look at all the improvement I've done. Second place, a masked man... Now, wouldn't... look. You got any written agreement with him? Well, no. It's all right, then. You own the claim, you can do what you want with it. I brought the sheriff here to tell you so. But, Captain, ain't no gold I there. ain't worried about that. You got some secret place that you're lugging that dirt to, uh, ain't that so? Well, uh, yeah. The masked man found the place. And it's it... proven right valuable, ain't it? Well... Would have some value. Some? Oh, 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 I should smile. Uh, now, look, Doc, I'll be fair with you, or you'll be fair with me. I'm willing to pay for all the expense you've gone to. Mm, I've had a lot of men working. I reckon they must have got thousands of dollars worth of work done. Oh, I'll pay for that. You let me have the claim back. Now, that's fair, ain't it? But, Gabby, you shouldn't do that sort of thing, Dad, right at all. I ain't complaining about the deal. Even if there ain't no gold in the claim. Aside from everything else, I misled you. There wasn't gold there, so I misrepresented and want to make good. But don't you see? I wouldn't want to take around 
$5,000 off here for what you might call nothing? Well, I uh, <clears throat> only have 4000 cash, but uh, well, I'd give you back your mortgage. Now will you do it? Oh, the masked man mightn't like it. He's got nothing to say. There's only one thing I'd have to know, of course, and uh, well, that is uh, where you're taking that dirt. Oh, I'd be willing to let you in on that. Providing I take your offer. I got a paper all drawn up here now, and your mortgage, and here's the cash. Uh, all you got to do is sign right here. Uh, here. You've got the deed, of course, but you can give me that later on. Well, well now remember, Cap, you got to help me out if that masked man objects to this. Oh, sure, sure, sure thing, Doc. Now, just sign there. Here? That's it. That's it. Sign oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, all the dreams there, I had. There, there, there. Now, Sheriff, you sign so it's legal. Uh -huh. Good work, Doctor. Uh, I got the cash. Boys, boys, come and get your pay. Now, now, remember, Gabby, we told you the darn thing's no good. Where are you taking the ore to? That's what I want to know. You'll find a bad swamp just beyond the next hill, Gabby. Swamp? These men have been working hard to haul dirt to that swamp and fill it in. When that job is done, a road can be built there. But where's the cash coming from? You just gave the cash to Dr. Withers. He'll pay the men with that. Uh, I mean... What have you been digging for? Dirt to fill in the swamp. Uh, hold on. You were told the land was worthless. You knew it was worthless. But you thought no one could tell the truth. Sheriff! Sheriff, I've been fleeced! It serves you darn well right. You thought to swindle Doc, huh? You didn't know that the Lone Ranger was his friend. Lone Ranger? You ain't a mining expert? We can leave now, Tata. You got what was coming to you, Cabby. Doc got his home all fixed up and the swamp's filled in and all Doc's friends have had some work for ready cash. We're more bleached to you than ever, Doc. And I got... I got a half-built mess of house in the middle of nowhere. You got what you deserve. Hail Silver Copyrighted feature, The Lone Ranger Incorporated.